thanks for tuning back into this week's video and what we're going to be looking at in particular is editing in black and white or editing in monochrome and it's just different considerations to make but what you have to remember there are a myriad of different ways and different considerations when you are editing any image at all be that black and white or colour you have to get from the image what you want to get from the image do you want to set a high contrast image? Do you want to set a subtle, softer image? You've got to think about all these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you different methods I employ throughout all the different images. It just so happens that I'm continuing from last week's video to get the final result that I'm after. Now, I won't show you the final results. I'll just show you the tips that or the techniques, should I say, that I use. I'm not going to say the tips and that you should use them or anything like that. It's just everybody does things differently. And I find these ones very, very useful and very handy when I'm making considerations for my black and white editing. So without further ado, let's dive right into these. This one here is different from last week's because this is it, stripped right back. This is how the camera caught it. As you can see, there is no edits going on here whatsoever. F10, 24 mm ISO 320. So what I'm going to do is just going to show you, I didn't want to adjust this one too much. So I'm just going to go in and show you the things that I did very, very simply to get it to a balance. Now there's another couple of images in this edit that I'm going to show you a different way to approach. So perhaps you'll get something from them. First thing I am going to do here is I am going to dehaze slightly. And I know if I go too far that we get the haloing around the tree. So I'm just going to dehaze slightly. Then I'm going to push the clarity. So as I say, this is going to be a different style of editing from the next two images. And I won't do a finished edit, I'll just show you the wee considerations that I'm making. I'm going to pull the highlights back slightly as well. Not too much. I'm just going to go for a visual one here. I'm going to lift the shadows slightly. Clarity's already done, texture's already done. We don't need vibrance and saturation because we're not looking at colour here, which is really, really good. Uh, contrast, I'm going to push just now. And I'm going to push that contrast just slightly. The other thing that you can do is you can get into the tone curve. And within the tone curve, you have point curve and linear. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point here and take that on. And I'm just going to put it in there and just show you what it does. So I can drag that up. I can drag it back down just to a point where I don't get too much hailing around the tree. So if I go Y in the keyboard, there's the before, there's the after. Now there's a subtle difference, not too much, but hopefully that lets you see that sometimes you will get a nice effect from the images with minimal editing. Now you can also go in to the black and white and play around here, and you also have the ability to do that. But I'll show you that in the next image. So the next image, we are going to look at a different consideration when it comes to editing these. And it's basically setting your blacks and setting your whites. And then we work with the mid-tones. So I've got to choose within this image how dark I want to go and how light I want to go. So if I go into basics and I'll leave that checked at the moment and I'll actually check the white as well. We've got plenty of room to play with here though. And I'm going to get into the blacks and I'm going to bring the blacks down and see what I think. I can also take them away so that it's not black at all. You'll notice that there's no blue here whatsoever. This is a choice now from your black and white editing. I'm actually going to go quite dark with this. So I'm going to increase the blacks in here just to around there, just for this image in particular. Now looking at the whites and the highlights, I've got plenty of room to play with here and this is going to change the image entirely. So I can push that. If I go too far, I'm still not peaking at all. I thought I saw some red in there. So I could go like that and you can see how much that's brightened it up. I can then go into the whites and now it starts bleeding into the image. If I wanted a highly contrasted image, this is how I would work. I don't want a highly contrasted image for this. I'm just looking for a nice balance of my whites and my blacks and then I'll work the in-between 
of the mid-tones with that image and you can see already how much this has changed. So I'm going to bring my highlights back actually, that's just a bit too much for me. And I'm going to work with it there. So what I can do now is I can turn this off and you can see that there and how it's looking. I'm going to go in and dehaze the image and I'm also going to add a tiny bit of clarity to this before I work with the mid-tones. Now that's just my pre preferred way of doing it. It's entirely up to you whether you go in and sh play around with the shadows just now and then go into clarity and dehaze. But if you do that, you will notice that it will affect. So I want to have a good starting point for working with the shadows. So I'm going to add my dehaze and it just ever so slightly. And I'm not seeing too great a difference here, so I'm quite happy with that. Clarity I don't normally push, but we're going to push it in this one. If I go too far with the clarity, you see what we get. If I take it back that way, you also see what happens at. So I'm actually going to push this a bit further than I normally do. And at the same time as you're using these, look at it visually. And if you're thinking about printing them as well, also look at your histogram. So I'm going to push that to a bit there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and look at the shadows and how now that I've balanced the image that I'm happy with and see how the shadows now affect it. So I'm going to go in here. Now there's many different ways of doing this. I'm just showing you one of my preferred methods. And if I zoom in there, I can still see the details that I want to see. And although it looks quite contrasty here, I still have retained those details. Now, as I'm zooming in and out, I'm not, as I say, I'm not going in for a full edit. I'm not going in to clean these images up. I'm just showing you the considerations that I made when editing. And for example, these ones haven't been edited. So I'm looking just to balance that. So at the moment, I'm not adding contrast because as soon as I add contrast in, it works again with my shadows. So how I'm actually going to do that is what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into black and white and you see that black and white's off. So I know that my grass is yellow. Uh, and there'll be hints of orange and green within that as well. So if I lift the yellows, that's what happens. And I can darken them down. I also have control of them again by here. So if I click on there, that would be blues in the sky. I can bring them back slightly. But we don't want to go too far, and I'll show you why. Up here, because of the balance we made, we now get what looks like fringing. And although it's not, it's just the light hitting the tree, it looks like fringing. So you have to take that into consideration. So I'm going to bring that back slightly, just to put there. Now it's still there, but I don't have as much contrast to make it jump out at you. So that's another thing that you can do. And I'll go on here and let's just go in around this area here and raise that slightly. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm watching the entire image and taking it to a point that I'm happy with. And there we go. And if I click on here, that'll do the yellows and it'll give me more sun in the image. And at the same time, unbalance the image for me, visually for myself. So let's just have a look and see if I take that back down to there. And you can see it's affecting the oranges and the yellows. Can go back down. So I'm going to balance it out about there. And that's it. The next thing I would do is I could go in and do the same with the tone curve, but as I've already showed you that in another image, I'll keep that for another one. Finally, for this, I'm going to get into the detail. The default sharpening is on. If I hold down Alt on my keyboard, and you can see all the lens spots there, uh, and push that for the masking, everything I can see in white is being sharpened. Everything else has not been sharpened. Or should I say the blacks are not being sharpened. The greys, very slightly. And I can also push that slightly as well, just so as I can see. Now, you don't want to over sharpen either. Let's go in and see that. That looks fine at that. Yep. But I also, because I've brightened the image up as well, the light will make the image look slightly softer down the tree here. But hopefully you get the idea with that one. Last but not least, I'm going to jump into this colour image. Now, I shot this before uh, I parted ways with my 24 to 200 
uh, mill lens and it's actually one of my favourite images with the lens but I, I'm glad I parted with, with, it, with it, it allows me to save up and get a, another lens that I'm actually after as well. So what we've got to consider here is we've got distractions of colour and this was shot colour as the, the other ones were but this was actually shot with a colour viewfinder as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get straight into my colour profile and I'm just going to go monochrome for this. From this one, let's do the exact same thing and balance out the image. So my black's in here, you can see there. So you can see by the histogram, it's okay, it's not a brilliant histogram, but it is okay. So what I'm going to do with this image, same as before, I'm going to set my blacks where I want them to be and my lightest areas, my whites, where I want them to be as well. So first thing, bring my blacks in. Now I know for a fact, even if I do that, we're only going to get a couple of areas in here. You can see they're just a tiny wee touch down there. So that's the blue. I'm not worried about that. It only depends if you want a high contrast image, I would turn them on just to see how much of a high contrast white and black you're going to get. So that's me, I've pulled that back minus three. Highlights, I'm going to raise slightly and the reason I'm raising them slightly more than what I normally would is because as soon as I push in the dehaze, the clouds are going to pop slightly. It affects the whole image, it's a global edit. Everything we're doing in this video is global edits, we're not going into uh, local editing. So I'm just going to do that. And there we've, I'm not going to say balanced it out, but you can see how much of a difference is in there. Now this may look too much to you looking at it from here, but I'm quite happy. Again, these are your images, so I'm now going to play with the shadows. And I could lift the shadows like so, I bring them back again, entirely up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lift them slightly, not too much either, because I quite like the contrast and I like the contrast against the grass in the foreground and the actual tree. It had been raining before this photograph, so we've got that kind of nice contrast in there. Clarity, again, something, as I said, I don't normally do it. I'm going to push the clarity. Now, if I go too far, that's just too much, but let's just go in, push it slightly, about there, that looks okay, zoom in, yup, everything's looking fine here, quite happy with that, and you can see there's a wind blowing when I took it as well, but I quite like that image, I actually really, really like that image. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the colour here, and it's black and white, and I want to play around with the blues in the sky, so I'm going to grab the point, and I'm going to go over here and bring the blues down, now if I go too far, that's what I get. I don't want that. I don't want it to be too light either. I just want a nice mix in here. I do want it darkened down and I keep looking over at the slider, but that's simply because I don't want it to go too far, although it's a visual representation I'm looking for. I'm going to get into the greens slightly. You can see if I pull them back and that's affecting the greens and the yellows as I thought it would, but Oh, I need to lighten it slightly. This should only affect the orange and yellows. And that's what we meant by the tonal side of, th of the image when you're looking at for shooting tones. I'm going to lift that slightly. Probably more than I normally would. And let's lift that. So there we have the before and after. And it's up to you to decide what image editing you prefer and how you prefer to look at your images. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you got something from it. Uh, as I say, many different ways of doing things. Look for what you want to get out of an image. That's the main thing. You're shooting for yourself. You're shooting to make the best that you can of the image that you have taken. Now we're always learning and perhaps techniques that you're using just now, you will change in the future because as you mature as a photographer and an editor, some of the methods that you use, you don't no longer need. So just look at things that way and don't ex think that you have to get the perfect image. We're always learning. That's the good thing about it. We're always, always learning. Thanks very much for watching and next week's video will be back on location. Fingers crossed uh, it will be back on location. 
and I've got another technique that I would like to run past you in the video. Thanks again for watching. Remember, if you're currently not a subscriber and have enjoyed some of the content in this video, check out the rest of the videos in the channel. There may be something there for you. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.